Hey guys, how you doing? So somebody asked me, why is JavaScript, why did it become so popular? Why did it become the most popular programming language in the world today? So in this video, I'm going to answer that. And this is going to give you insights into software development in general to help you make decisions about where you should go with your career, what you should study. So it's a bit of nerd, a little bit of business, a little bit of jobs. So JavaScript, became the most popular programming language in the world because it was the only game in town in terms of browser, client-side scripting or programming. At one point, Microsoft had put out something called VB script, but it only worked in Explorer. It didn't work in the other web browsers. It only worked in Microsoft's web browser. Whereas JavaScript was uh, worked everywhere. It's open source, free. I don't know if it was open source. I think it was. It was free. Anyhow, JavaScript in of itself, um, the mechanics of the language, I think, contributed as well to its adoption. It was part of the C family of language. It was released at the same time as Java. Java and JavaScript, for marketing purposes, they say, shared the same or similar names. So, you know, if you wrote Java, you wrote C, you wrote C++, JavaScript was kind of familiar because you had the same uh, basic uh, structure to it in terms of uh, the way the syntax looked, at least. Anyhow, so the number one reason why JavaScript is so popular is because it was the only game in town. It was cross-platform. You could use it on both Microsoft web browsers and, Netflix, and not Netflix, uh, Netscape, etc., and that was a big reason. Another reason was it was approachable. You could, with very little code, actually get something to happen with JavaScript. Whereas with other languages out there, mm, not so easy. And you didn't have to install anything. When you ran a browser, a web browser, it just worked. You know, it just worked. So that's the, uh, I think uh, that's uh, the top reasons that JavaScript became so widely adopted. So what happened at some point is that uh, they created a Node, which is basically JavaScript ported to the server. Because originally JavaScript was a web browser only, a client side only scripting or programming language. And at one point they created a Node, they brought it to the server, and people were attracted to that because uh, they liked the idea that you could write JavaScript on the server, JavaScript on the client, and you don't have to write multiple programming languages. Eh, personally, I don't see that as a huge advantage because programming is programming. But uh, there you go. So it's ease of use, uh, the fact that it's easy to learn, the fact that it was ubiquitous, ubiquitous that it was all over the place. That's why it, uh, it became the most popular programming language in the world. Furthermore, what really kept it there was because in the web browser, I, again, as I said in the past, you could, at least with the Microsoft browsers, use VB script to uh, write your client side code or your in-browser programming code, but that disappeared. That disappeared. I believe over the years, other uh, other nerds try to port other languages into the browser. I'm not sure about that. It's been so long. doesn't matter. When it came to browser, in-browser programming, it was all about JavaScript. That's it. You had no other option. And that alone would ensure it's uh, a dominance in the programming world. And now uh, you see JSON which is JavaScript object notation. It's basically a very lightweight JavaScript-based object. That's now the universal way of exchanging information across systems. Yet another reason why JavaScript is so popular. So what is the lesson to learn here? The lesson to take away from this is that technology performance, technology uh, purity, Technology quality doesn't necessarily dictate whether or not a particular technology becomes dominant in the field. Now, I'm not poo-pooing on JavaScript, although a lot of people would poo-poo on JavaScript. It's got some weird things about it. Overall, though, 
because it is ubiquitous, easy to access, I think ubiquitous, ubiquitous is the word, I've only had one coffee today, so the synapses are not firing as quickly as they should. And I had some bread. Bread will slow you down as well, mentally. Anyway, yeah, so because it was, it was the first one in the web browser, that's the first thing. Being first to market is huge. I should have mentioned that earlier. So when the web browsers came out, they, uh, the people, somebody, I forget his name, but this, this nerd said, hey, we need to have a scripting language for the web browser, so they wrote JavaScript. And um, being a first mover, being cross-platform, and being easy to get up and running with, that's why it dominates. That's why it dominates. You see that in other areas. So, and again, JavaScript is not necessarily the best programming language of all. It depends who you talk to. Uh, you see that in uh, other technologies. So, for example, Python is, is similar in a, in a respect where it's easy to learn, easy to install, cross-platform, and became widely in free and is widely used, adopted. So now it's probably number two. It probably in terms of the most used programming languages today, it's going to be Python or JavaScript. Those are the two, uh, the two big ones duking it out, if you will. This, you, this ease of access, ease of deployment, um, characteristic of a technology, and how that allows it to become dominant, you see that in the content management space with WordPress. WordPress is a, uh, was a blogging tool, which slowly, slowly built up into a full-fledged content management system. Um, that, too, became super dominant because it was free. There's a lot of other content management systems out there, including some pretty big ones that were uh, pay. You had to pay for them. But, of course, free wins. So Automatic, the company that controls WordPress, is now a billion-dollar industry. And they have all these tiered levels of access. But the point is, WordPress became dominant because, again, it was easy to deploy, easy to learn the basics, and it was free, so it was all over the place. That's what did it, does it. So anyway, when you're evaluating technologies going forward, you want to look for those characteristics in technologies. That typically tells you who is going to dominate. Not always the case, but many a times that's the case. Those three factors I just mentioned. Uh, yeah, so I'm recording this in uh, September. Well, actually, October 2025. Python, good thing to learn. JavaScript, very good thing to learn. Uh, the web stack, very good thing to learn. It's all related. Um, in a broader sense, I would also learn SQL, which is a language of relational databases. And of course, I would learn AI-assisted development and AI-first development. These are the, the key superpower skill sets to learn. Uh, whatever you do, though, don't learn Ruby. Ruby. 